Okay, so here's a comparative case to the AQA, GCC, geography. This is a Japanese and a Nepalese earthquake, so the Tohoku and the Gorka, uh events. What does your AQA want you to do? So can we anticipate the worst question they could ask you? To show how the effects and responses to a tectonic hazard vary between two areas of contrasting levels of wealth. Japan, very expensive, very wealthy. Nepal, not so wealthy. Okay, comparison. So here is a map. Here are the Japanese islands. There's the epicenter of the earthquake. And this is the one that was known as the Fukushima earthquake. So you remember, uh, hopefully, the massive tsunami impact, the Fukushima nuclear reactors. So we're talking about the eastern coast of the mainland of uh Japan, very close to the Pacific Plate meeting, the Eurasian Plate meeting, the Philippine Plate. By contrast, in Nepal, very, very poor landlocked country, up in the Himalayas, of course, you've got one fault line in the, 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 the meeting place of Eurasia and the, the Indo-Australian Plate, the Australian Plate meeting it. And the episode was right in, in the center of this, this uh, interesting, quite um, linear country spread out in a line. Okay, comparison, remember. So here are the effects divided to primary and secondary. So about the same time, March, March 2011, April 2015, Japan on the left, Nepal on the right, primary 700 killed, 4.4 million homes with no electricity, magnitude of nine. Just pause there, over on in Nepal, Magnitude that was slightly less, remember it's a logarithmic scale, so it's 7.8 is significantly smaller, however 8,800 dead, so a smaller earthquake did more damage, 20,000 people, etc. Uh, and then the other bits are local, can't directly compare them, so in Japan, transport knocked out, communications disrupted, telephone knocked out. In uh, Nepal, nine climbers were killed, roads blocked in valleys. Okay, but I, I would focus on the fact that Japan had a much higher magnitude, 700 killed. Nepal, a significantly smaller earthquake, many more killed. Okay, secondary impacts, big tsunami, 38 meters high, 10,000 people killed by the tsunami. So the secondary impacts were large, uh, twice as many that were, were lost. Um, um, two, twice as many more were lost and eventually found. Flooding inland, nuclear reactors, you got big economic impacts. You then had disease spread by insects. You had food supply that was affected, making the long-term effects longer. Water supplies contaminated and secondary things like fires. And secondary economic, remember your sheet factors, social, historic, economic, environmental, political, economic factors. The stock market crashed in Japan, which of course had ripples around the stock markets of the world. So you could say extend the scale of the disaster. Whereas in Nepal, 30 million people displaced. No tsunami. So the immediate impact was all that accounted for. So just get your head around that. 10 billion pounds worth of damage, much smaller than the total damage in Japan. People cancel flights, but it did think disrupt tourism, which of course is a way for Nepal to gain money, affecting people's education uh, and Kathmandu, the capital. The response is there, quite different. Short term response, very fast in Japan, very prepared in Japan. Three minutes after the earthquake, the tsunami warning went out. Met Office on TV telling people to get home. They practice evacuation um, um, plans. There's a national day of evacuation practice, you know. Then you've got some specific things. If you remember them, great. Dropping in local information is good. But don't just drop that. Jackie Chan gave $3 million, okay? Probably not the most important thing. Strong police presence. 91 countries offered their services a lot of it bilaterally from one country to another country, Japan bilaterally, um, and ATT, at t put in free communications. Short term in Nepal, first 24 hours, no assistance came at all because news didn't get out. Very remote location, mountainous, roads, less reliable telecommunications. Lion helicopters eventually came from Nepalese army, the government requested help. It came from the neighbors, China sent army help, Pakistan sent army help, because it had to be local to get in there quickly, rather than um, the, the mass that was able to get into the ports of Japan and get into the area very quickly, especially that nuclear power plant beginning to fry up. Longer term, 116 countries and 28 international organizations helped uh, the Japanese get back on their feet. All 55 Japanese nuclear plants were closed down, and most of them remains closed. Toyota and Sony, that should say, stopped production in Japan, but they just boosted production elsewhere, so they were still able to make their products. Ports were open by the end of March very rapidly, um, but there were still 330 people homeless a year later, because many of them wanted to go back to where they came from. Um, but of course, there was a problem with nuclear radiation leak. But that wasn't the, the 330 homeless 
there was good accommodation for them, but they actually were hanging out to good because they wanted to go home. Fair enough. Long term for Nepal was that tourists didn't want to go there. They cancelled their bookings, which meant one of the few industries that brought in foreign money for Nepal. And have a look at the case study on Tanzania about the role of tourism for development. That suddenly dropped off. Um, but as an MIC, 450 million of international aid was sent, but it just wasn't enough. Two very different experiences of earthquakes, uh, which is worth looking at. There's a couple of questions. Have a look at the resource again. You can find the link underneath this video.